Hey, up me duck YouTube. Welcome to another video. Today, I'll be looking at the National League's best transfers from Aldershot Town to Yeovil Town Football Club. This is the finest and highest level of non league for those which don't already know. Uh, and I will be going through their best transfers. This is the penultimate one. I'm going to be doing the National League South next week, and then I'll see what new ideas I'll come up with after that. So, um, starting off with Aldershot Town, I've gone with Jamie Sendler's White. Uh, he used to play in the Northern Irish Youth International setup, and his last team was Crawley Town. During his time at Crawley, he made 14 appearances with one assist. He achieved promotion to the National League with Torquay, and he clearly has leadership qualities as he has been made captain of the squad. He clearly has great qualities and attitude for the game. Uh, for Altrincham, I've gone with Richie Sutton. He can operate as a centre-back or full-back. With Mansfield Town, he won the National League. And the following season, he won the Player of the Season award. In his four appearances for the club so far, he has scored once. He has made 365 appearances as a professional, so is certainly experienced. He's already received a red card, so it implies to me he does have a violent streak, but I don't know what it was for. So, But, yeah. Barnett, I've gone with Ben Nugent. He is tall, commanding centre-back, who I believe is going to be captain. I don't know if that's true, but... I believe he is. A 27-year-old won, won the 2012 Championship with Cardiff, being their young player of the year during that season. He has lots of experience in the Football League with last season playing for Stevenage. So I'm amazed he took the step down to non-league. But there you go. For Boreham Wood, I've gone with Nathan Ashmore. This goalkeeper is actually versatile, as during his youth he played as a right winger. Uh, he's won the Southern Premier, uh, no, the Southern Division One, League Division One, the Southern Premier League, and the Conference South. So he's clearly experienced at the non-league level. Uh, as far as goalkeeping go, I think it's quite a good signing. Um, yeah, Bromley. I've gone with James Allaby. During his five appearances, he has scored one goal so far. Uh, and at Leighton Orient, he got promoted from the National League. He doesn't score a lot of goals, but brings other players into play. So, not only is his experience with Leighton, he was also at Tranmere, Chester and Eastleigh in this league. Furthermore, he's strong and direct, with a decent bit of pace. And so physicality will be helpful up front. For Chesterfield, I've gone with Nathan Tyson. Speaking in 2002, I think this just shows his experience here, Cheltenham Town Manager Steve Cotterill stated, he is very quick and his main asset is his pace. I don't know how true that is now, being in his 30s. but And then later on, writing for The Guardian in October 2005, David Pleat said that as a speedy left-footed goal scorer, Tyson is a rarity in the modern game, who made well-timed runs, particularly for through balls, and had determination to chase lost causes. He represented England under 20s in 2003. So, although being 37, I think, I think if he still has this turn as pace, he could rip the division up. But, I don't know how many appearances he'll end up getting in total. For Dagenham and Redbridge, I've gone with George Saunders. He scored on his Hornchurch debut in a 3-0 win against Leatherhead. And in 2018-19, he was voted player of the season. His last manager even called him irreplaceable. He has technicality and athleticism. His assist record is unbelievable. And it takes a gamble to find a good player. Such as Vardy at Leicester. So I believe this guy could actually go all the way to the Championship or Premier League. Never know. For Dover Athletic, I've gone with Travis Gregory. 
He's a skillful winger who started his career with the academies of Chelsea and Glasgow Rangers. Signed from Greenwich Borough in June 2018 and is a firm favourite with the supporters for his winger wizardry. That was last season. He also uh, played for East Grinstead Town and Beckenham Town. All of this amounts to a lot of experience. Uh, so I think he used to play for Leatherhead was his club they signed for. For Eastleigh, I've gone with Dan Smith. Smith primarily plays the centre forward, but has also featured as a central midfielder and as a right back. During his tenure at Bognor Regis, he was a prolific goal scorer of 28 goals in 38 appearances. And he's still young at 20, so has huge potential. So if he can carry on his goal scoring record, who knows? They could manage to get into League Two easily. FC Halifax Town, I've gone with Luke Summerfield. At 32, he is incredibly experienced. He got to the playoffs with Wrexham in 2018-19, but ended up battling relegation the following season. This just proves, I think, how much he can cope under pressure and for the adjusting needs of Halifax this season. We'll clearly know what to expect. He's already scored once, actually, in his two appearances. For Hartlepool United, I've gone with Mark Shelton. He was there last season on loan, so knows the club. He was part of the Salford squad, who got a double promotion from the National League North to League Two. Last season at Hartlepool, he made 14 appearances, scoring three goals. He is still young and energetic, and is a great asset in midfield. For Kings Lynn Town, I've gone with Jamar Loza. He has made four appearances for Jamaica, winning the Caribbean Cup in 2014. He also has played for various football league clubs, and during his loan spell at Woking, he scored seven goals in nine games. Speaking in June 2014, Norwich City manager Neil Adams described Loza as a direct player who is lightning quick and can run with the ball, and he causes defenders a lot of problems. In an interview in January 2015, Loza stated that I like to run in behind. I love scoring goals, but I also let the ball come to feet as well as link up play. So this sounds like a great player they have got on their hands here. For Maidenhead United, I've gone with Nathan Blissett. He won the league with Macclesfield in 2017 and won the playoffs with Bristol Rovers. He is six foot five inches tall and a powerful centre forward who is a real threat with quality in the box. Then, with Plymouth Argyle, he won promotion to League One. In 2018-19, he reached double figures for goals with Solihull Moors. So, I think it's all in all a great signing for Maidenhead United. Uh, Notts County, I've gone with Scott Wilson. Last season, he was on loan here, scoring on his debut in the FA Trophy. With Macclesfield, he scored 10 goals, and Scott can hold the ball up or run in behind defences and score. But he's also a team player, because in front of goal, he's not too selfish. For Solihull Moors, I've gone with Josh V. Shergill. He has played anywhere, he can play anywhere down the left hand side of the pitch. He is quick, dynamic, and technically very good. He is still young, so has plenty of time to develop. But other than that, he is still relatively unknown because he's been signed from Leeds Academy. For Stockport County, I've gone with Jamie Stott. Previously having two loan spells with Stockport, he managed to win the league and young player of the season with them. Still being young, he already brings proven ability to this squad. And he already has a partnership with Ash Palmer. On his debut for Oldham, he uh, received the Man of a Match award. So just proves how good of a player he is and can make an instant impact. For Sutton United, I've gone with Dean Buazanis. Don't think that's how you pronounce it, but we'll roll with it. He has represented both Australia's and Greece's youth teams. He has also has experience in England's football, being uh, for Liverpool youngster, who went on to play for Oldham and for Accrington Stanley. 
While at Liverpool, Rafael Benitez called him the best goalkeeper for his age. I think that's quite high praise, considering the stature of Rafael Benitez as a manager. For Torquay United, I've gone with Fraser Kerr. The towering centre-back has made appearances for Scotland's youth setup with Motherwell. He featured in all three of the side's Europa League clashes. He's also got experience at this level, though, with Gateshead and Hartlepool. With the latter, he made 28 appearances. This adds experience to the talky side. For Worldstone, I've gone with Dan Wishart. Uh, winner of both the National League South and the National League playoffs. A versatile left-sided player from the left-back to the left wing. He is a physical left-footer and during his time with Maidstone, he scored seven goals, helping him to the FA Cup second round. He also has had 10, years, 10 seasons of experience and has played twice for the England C squad, proving how good of a player he is at non-league. Weymouth, I've gone with Cody Cook. With experience both with Truro and St Mirren, this is a logical signing and he has already scored in his five appearances. Unfortunately, he is a bit injury pro, but he has made 28 appearances with St Mirren, scoring five times. A hat-trick of those came on the final day of the 2018-19 season. And the only reason he's actually joined Weymouth is because he wants to be closer to his family. For Woking, I've gone with John Goddard. In his first spell at the club, he actually racked up 139 appearances, scoring 31 goals in all appearances. So he does know the club quite well. He is versatile and can play as an attacking midfielder, winger or secondary striker. He was a fan's favourite last time. And in his final season at Woking, he won the Player of the Year old. This actually was probably what resulted in him moving to Swindon Town. For Rexon, I've gone with Jordan Davis. Part of the Brighton Academy, the 22-year-old can play as a left-back or left-wing. That seems quite a common occurrence at this level, playing some any position. Uh, he's more versatile than last time, though, and he can. He came and than last time he came, and uh, he is more attacking-minded, trying to get goals and assists here and there. Last season, he appeared in the EFL Trophy for Brighton and 21s. He didn't make any appearances, unfortunately, last time for Wrexham, so I think he's got something to prove. But he was a, he then moved to Bangor City, where he ripped it up a bit. And finally, for Yeovil Town, I've gone for Ryan Burke. The fullback made one appearance for Birmingham against Stoke. He has a tough tackle in him, shown by his two yellow cards in four matches, but is highly rated in Birmingham's academy. I, again, as he is from Academy, I don't know that much about him, but I'm sure he will be a great player. So, I hope you enjoyed. I will be doing History of Your Club with Fulham, and then further down the non-league pyramid with the National League North and South will be next week. So, all them uh, your City fans out there, I'm looking at you. Uh, and any other ones, of course. So, see you then.